Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. <sighs> Twitch.com. That's where you can catch live streams. Or you don't got to catch live streams. You can replay old lives on there. Just lock in, man. The username's at the bottom of the screen, man. Don't forget, we do got Patreon as well. We post five days a week. That's content that is not on YouTube that gets voted on every time a show ends. We vote a new show in. Sometimes I take off authoritative creativity and pick my own show because y'all be picking the same shows, just different casts sometimes. Um, and we got merch. The link to all of that is down in the description below. But this is the warning screen. You see it just in case. And things of that nature. Um, but let's get into it, man. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 5, Episode 2. There is 34 episodes in this in this season. That is insane. It's the last season, though, so I salute that energy. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Here we go. Can you talk? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Personal debt in the UK exceeded one and a half trillion pounds in 2016. A 53 billion pound increase since the previous year. This dramatic rise resulted in over 300,000 people seeking advice from a debt charity in the first half of the year alone. Adults in the UK will owe an average of 47. Hey. Matt like Highway and Gary Ball are High Court enforcement agents. They travel all over the West Midlands, recording <coughs> debts and seizing goods. Right, let's go and live the dream, mate, shall we? Let's go and make someone's day. It's 7 a.m. So and you, they're in Birmingham to collect... So what that lets me know is you know what you be on. You know you be ruining days. Nearly £2,000 owed in unpaid parking fines. So oh, mate, still dark and we're in Northfield. It's life gym, but not as we know it. Let's mix it up, mate. Yeah, go on. You ask me where we're going. Do you know where we're going? I do, mate, yeah. You tell I me. I know where we're going. Go on. We're going to see a Mr. Stephen Watson. Okay, you got that bit in, right. In Northfield. You got that bit right. And he owes a Watson? few pence under £2,000. Yeah, it's 1967 pounds and... I hope we ain't see this one. 99 pence. There you go. I feel like that last name sound mighty oh. familiar. If Mr. Wattam can't <coughs> or won't pay, we'll take it away. The agents can seize goods and vehicles belonging to him to offset the debt. With the fester in the drive. Mmm. I think we did see this one. Oh. You could have worked with us. <laughs> Why would they see this? And that be my main problem. You know what I'm saying? Why would they throw that in there like that? Well, no one we sink this one. Come on now. All right, we're on track. Here we go. A recent survey has shown that nearly 17 million people across the UK are at serious risk of getting into debt. 40% of working age people have less than £100 in savings. So any unexpected bills or expenses is going to put them out of, out of commission. Could suddenly push them into a financial crisis. At the end of 2016, an average debt for the UK adult exceeded 30. Okay. 
High Court Enforcement Agents Gary Brown and trainee Connor Jackson work all over London and the South East. Yeah, I ain't seen this. I ain't seen this one. Collecting debts and seizing goods. Nice sunny day, it's only nine degrees. Today they're in Lewisham, South East London, with a writ to recover over £1,700 owed by Carl Gardner to a parking company. What we got next, mate? I do believe some parking tickets for the amount of £1,752. And I honestly understand the parking ticket situation. Like, you're going to have to come get it up out of me. <laughs> All right, come on, bro. Parking should be free anyway. Like, stop the cap. Like, what are y'all doing? And 80 pence. I borderline don't believe in paying for parking. I do it because, you know what I'm saying? But if I just so happen to not do it and y'all slide on me with a rip, all right, fight me. No, the kidding. job sounds straightforward. Just kidding. But it will push all of Gary and Connor's skills and abilities to the limit. We get abilities pushed to the limit? the second one in from the end, mate. Second. It's in a cold. Oh, it's bicycles outside. Sign. Hello. Hello. Hi. Come on, mate. Are you are, sir. Carl Gardner, please. Who are you, please, mate? Who am I, his brother? Okay. Um, have you got a phone number for him? We could speak to him about, please. Yeah. All right, mate. Um, we're here about a legal matter. Ideally, we need to speak to Carl. Yeah. Well, I haven't got a number for him. He's just come here, right? That's him. Anymore. But he doesn't live here, you say? No. But Carl is listed on the electoral roll at this address. The agents have the right to stay and investigate further. Do you own this property? Do you live here or do you live here with parents? Or... Is your mum here? Yeah, but she's 281. Could I see a copy of the council tax bill or the tenancy agreement? The easiest way, if we can't find the paperwork, is if we just come in, have a look around and confirm that he doesn't live here. Give us a sec. OK. The man claiming to be Carl's... Okay, sounds smooth thus far. Um, bro, let's, 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 let's take a deep dive real quick. Bro answered the phone, I mean the door, full ball head. He got no hair, so he's over the age of 30. And from what I seen, he looked over the age of 40, living with his mother, living off of her, whatever she's getting, free bedroom, whatever. Maybe he's rocking out as her caregiver and getting paid or whatever for that, but it's, it's starting off bleak. I don't believe nothing. Brother has locked the agents out, but Gary is still suspicious that he could be the debtor. Stuttering and stammering about who lives here. So I'm not convinced at the moment. I don't believe his brother hasn't got a mobile number for him either. When people are telling the truth, their body language tells you quite a lot. And I'm quite observant to that. And people will look you in the eye, but when they lie, you know, they'll avoid eye contact. There'll be little gestures that they'll do. They give it all away. They will be very closed off physically from somebody such as myself that can spot that body language. I'm reading the chat. It can be quite easy to see. Five minutes later, the man has not yet returned. Broden took off his robe and went back to bed. That's tough. Ah, you found it. Ah, there he is. Okay. An appeal. I've got a letter from the council. Right. Have you got any ID, Lloyd? Just got... so I can confirm you're not Carl. All right. <laughs> the man has left the front door open, so Gary and Connor seize their opportunity. Excuse me, I didn't ask to come. I know you left the door open, sir, so we made peaceful entry. We're allowed to do that. Have you got um, a driving license or? I can't find the passport. Mom, who am I? Hey? Who am I? My daughter. Okay. My son. It seems the man is the debtor's brother after all. But the agents still need to establish whether Carl lives here or not. What if his name is Lloyd Carl Gardner? I want to cause as little stress to anyone else as possible. We need to see proof one way or another that he doesn't live here. 
Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, so, how can I prove that he doesn't live here? As far as I'm concerned, you've just walked into my property, mm -hmm. yeah, and you ain't got no legal. Your mom's property. Let's correct that. Right, so we have. We've got a high court writ. Do you want to follow us around so you can see what we're doing? Well, that's what my mum's got to say, yes. No, no, no. To be honest, Lloyd, I know it's her house and I respect that, but we have a job to do and we have legal authority from the courts. But Lloyd refuses to accept the agent's authority. I'm asking you to leave, please. And I'm saying no. We can yeah. gain peaceful entry. Yes, which you have done. You've Once we're in, in, yeah, you can't have us removed and you can't obstruct us from doing our job. Well, you're going to have to move me. And then that means you're going to have to fight me to move me, isn't it? Police will <laughs> No, what am I saying? Well, you're going to have to do that, because at the end of the day... Okay. Okay. Yes, mate. Yeah, please, mate. You know what I mean? The prospect of the police being called changes Lloyd's mind. Yeah, well, at the end of the day, you just let them come and look then, isn't it? Get Can we do that? One of them look. OK, don't bother yeah, calling okay. the police. All right, we've cancelled the phone call to the police, OK? Yeah, just one of you. Just one of you. Okay. Yeah, OK, right, I'll, stay, I'll stay down here, mate, not a yeah. problem. The agents have a right to search each room thoroughly for evidence that the debtor may in fact be living in the house. That's one room there. But Lloyd has other ideas. What are you looking for? Evidence. You can't just come in here Lloyd, and start Lloyd. opening up stuff. Yes, I can. And I'm going to. No, you can't. Yes, I can. The more you get involved... Lloyd, if you read the writ, you would understand that he can. He has authority by, you know what I'm saying, the highest court in the land. ...and try to obstruct me from doing it, the more you're going to get yourself in trouble. Then, in the next bedroom, Gary makes a game-changing discovery. Why is Carl Gardner's 30-day free trial for Amazon Prime in this, in this room? Because he used to live here. The discovery suddenly changes Lloyd's attitude. Right, so basically, I'll tell you what you do. Lloyd, Lloyd, call the police. Lloyd, call the police. Come start out. getting. No, come out. Call, call don't police, touch me. No, call the police. Call the police, yeah? Call the police, man. Call the police, man! Listen. I said, come out. Call the police, man. Come out. My mom's 81. Listen. Listen, you need come to out. stop. Hey, hey. Come out, then. Do not. Yeah, you come, come then. Out. Yeah. Yeah, you come. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. You want the police? Yeah. Yeah. Come, come out. Please. Please. You need to come. And I don't condone any form of violence, but for television, this is this is great. This is great. <laughs> you need to come out. No, we're not going anywhere. You need to come out. I'm telling y'all, I been told y'all, anybody who line up their mustache and their beard, like pencil thin, they got an attitude problem. They can go zero to a hundred real quick. Mom's house. I've been telling y'all that. I said you need to come out Step of my mom's house. Back. You need to come out of my mom's house. See? We're gonna call the police. Yeah, we'll call them. Call them. Yes. They tussle police, police immediately, please. Yes. Don't push me. Listen, I don't want you to push me down the stairs. All right, you can understand that, can't you? Yeah, I do. Right. I want you to go down and call the police down there. Yeah, come on. Listen, get off me. This simple debt recovery has turned into a violent situation. With the case on a knife edge, it will take all of Gary and Connor's experience to keep themselves. Oh my God, they up there tussling and rustling. Connor's experience to keep themselves safe until the police arrive. Connor Jackson and Gary Brown were in South East London, collecting a £1,700 debt from Carl Gardner for unpaid parking fines. Who are you, please, mate? Who am I, brother? Honestly, I don't need a recap. We already know. Things got negative. Now, despite the fact the police are on their way, Lloyd isn't backing down. I'm asking you nicely. Can you I'm stand saying up no. there? You're I'm saying no. My house. Listen, you need to stay yeah. calm. Do you understand me? I'm calm. You are not doing yourself any favours. This isn't even your debt. It doesn't matter about whose debt. You're in my mother's house. My mum's 81. When somebody's being aggressive and violent towards me, it does get my heart beating a bit faster. A it's not something that I'm ever going to accept. Sometimes it is the best decision to back off and wait for further assistance from police. Ten minutes after they were called, the police Just arrived. one officer? Two. Afternoon, guys. This is the writ for Carl Gardner at this address. He's saying he doesn't live here, but he's being very evasive and very 
cagey about the whole thing. He doesn't want us to be looking through drawers, which makes us think that there is a possibility that he does live here. I've come up there, seen him going through drawers. He didn't wait for me to come in the room. Then when I'm asking him to go back down the stairs and he said, well, they have well, to call the police. How about as a they have to call the police if that's whatever. I'm then. saying, yeah, call the police then. How but then you lot didn't want to come downstairs. You look inside my, my mum sitting down on the stairs. Which well, let's just go on. We'll go in all, yeah, all together with yourselves. We'll get this issue sorted out as quick as possible. To keep the peace, the police escort the agents back upstairs to the room they suspect might be Carl's. No. If he doesn't live here, then... I'm going to be honest you know, with we'll you. See. We'll see what I find. Okay, I'm going to need to move. Have gone through all of that riffraff and then the police just going back and letting them in and now there's more people in the house? Like... Pride is a pride is a crazy thing. The bed. So I get into these drawers. Another family member is watching the agent search. Carl Gardner. Carl Gardner. I found letters, birthday cards. Everything I'm seeing is for Carl Gardner. Yeah. Because he used to live here. Then Gary makes an unusual discovery. What I've got it? a few things here to Carl. There are several envelopes addressed to Carl, stuffed with cash. If he didn't live here, why wouldn't he take his money with him? He's allowed to open up his letters? Then, yes. This is addressed to Carl. Oi, oi, oi. You can't just take money. Yeah, but wait a minute. You even told me it was old or nothing. You decided You're not Carl. Money. You're not Carl. Yeah, well, that's why you ain't supposed to be in here. No, he's we legally, need to know why you're taking that money. Legally, it looks to me that this is Carl's money. No, 80, that is not Carl's 100, money. 20. It's not Carl's money. Gary has found in total £940 in the envelopes addressed to Carl. Why would he leave hundreds of pounds in an address that he doesn't live anymore? Right. I think it's becoming clear that this is Carl's room. It's a great feeling when you find that single crucial piece of evidence that confirms they live there. And y'all supposed to be on the same page. If he, if he, if if Lloyd is running distraction on the uh, the collectors, this is y'all time to get the stuff situated. Where's the money? Let me get the money gone so they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. An open letter, subscriptions, things taken out in the debtor's name. Oh, They're really? not going to have that there if they didn't live there. Despite claiming that he didn't have a number for his brother. Lloyd finally gets Carl on the phone. Hello, Carl. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Gary Brown. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm at this property. Lloyd is quite passionately stated that you don't live here. However, I've found evidence that you do. There's quite a number of envelopes with money in. So I've seized this cash. We've got nigh on a thousand pound in cash. So can you explain to me what this, what this money is owed for, please? It's for parking fines accrued against yourself. So you're actually in my room taking things out of my thing. So you do live no, here then? I don't, no, I don't live there, no. Well, you just said I'm, I'm in your room. room. You've just slipped up, Carl. No, You've just to me. admitted no, you stay up. in this room. No. You must have misunderstood me when I was thinking <laughs> no, I did not say that. It's on camera. Name on it. You're thinking it's mine. Gary's patience is now running out. I'm going to escalate this case to the sale and disposal stage very shortly. Now that I've established you live here, if you give me a refusal, if you give me a refusal to pay this debt in full, or if you say that you can't pay it, then I am going to remove goods and escalate this case. Are you going to pay this debt now? Are you happy with the money you received? No, I'm not. Why I want not? the full balance. You've got some cash. It doesn't matter. I want the full balance. Are you going to pay this debt or not? I don't have the money to pay okay. that. Okay. There you go. With Carl saying he can't pay any more than the thousand pounds, yeah, I'd be fed up at that moment. Found, the agents have no choice but to look for assets to cover the remainder of the seventeen hundred pound debt. But searching and listing assets to seize will it's increase the total easy. by a further six hundred and thirty mm. pounds. Right, it's gone to stage three. We're at two thousand three hundred eighty-two pounds and eighty pence. Either it's paid in full or we remove goods. There's no arguments about it. Lloyd, he's mm. escalated it now. Did you hear how much is needed, Lloyd? Connor, can you um, start making an inventory of goods? We'll start in this room. It's a shame it has to go this far, you know, before people realise we're serious. There doesn't appear to be much in the room of any value. But then, Gary spots some vehicle testing equipment. 
Connor? Yes, mate? What's this, mate? Is this a di diagnostics machine? Yes, um, it is. Yeah, that's a, that's worth a bit of dough, that is, mate. Is it? It's probably worth about six, seven hundred quid, that. Oh, OK. Suddenly, Lloyd makes the agents an offer. You got a grand, so that just leaves £442.80. Sorry, right, and there's no way that you can sort that out, like, even tomorrow or something like that? No, we need to get it sorted today, mate. Yeah, at this point, like, you know what I'm saying? All the negotiation, all of the let's be nice, let's call it in, let's get a pick. That's out the window. I want money now so I ain't never got to run into y'all again. I feel it. To settle the debt once and for all, Carl's it. mother pays the remaining balance. OG81 paying your bills. This is insane. If you can check the amount on your pin for me, please. Oh, yes. Thank you. So I'm just going to write you out a receipt for the cash. That's to say that we received the uh, £1,940. And then we'll sort out the rest on the card and we'll get out of it for you, mate. After nearly two hours at the house, the debt is settled in full. OK, that's it. We're done. All right, thank you very much. It's been a testing case for the agents. I don't believe a word anybody tells me until I see proof. I don't deal with people who say so. I deal with proof and evidence. So I look for evidence myself. He's tried pulling the wall. It hasn't worked. Mm. Pay the money. <laughs> Can we go on? Yeah. <laughs> There are currently 4.7 million self-employed workers in the UK, and the numbers are on the rise. But I'm the average the wage for someone self-employed is now lower than it was 20 years ago. A recent survey revealed that over 40% of people in self-employment earn less than a thousand pounds a month. 60% of all self-employed people struggle. Hey, I can see this. That's entrepreneurship though. High Court Enforcement Agents, Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Flintshire, North. I feel like I ain't seen Stuart out in these streets in a minute. <laughs> Wales, to collect more than £2,000 owed by tradesman Paul Wiley to a former employer. There's always a story, mate. There's always a story. <laughs> yeah. Looks a bit in darkness, I'll be honest. Top curtain, top curtain, twitching. We've got a twitcher. We've got a twitcher. Oh. Mr. Wiley's employers escalated the case to the High Court, and now he must pay the £2,200 he owes in full today. Appreciate the follow. <coughs> the door is open. Hello. So Stuart takes the opportunity to enter the property. Hello there. Hello, um, we're after Paul Wiley. Well, well, she, we're high court enforcement agents, you see. So we've been sent, we've been sent by the claimant to collect the most time in balance. Mm -hmm. um, he's, um, he's not here. Isn't it? Are you able to get him on the phone? No, because he's very big off. Right, OK. You need to try and get in contact with him, one way or another. I'll, I'll go out in the car and get him. Right. You're not coming out. Uh, we'll, we'll be staying here at the moment. Well, you can't stay in there because I need to go out in the car. Right, well, at, at the moment, we're inside the property. So <laughs> hey, Stuart, that's the thing though about Stuart. When he be out here, bro, he be so emotionless. Like, he be just straight. All right, well, we're not going to be moving. We're already inside the property. Mm. We're already here. Mm, that's unfortunate. You're going to need to get him on the phone. But the phone is disconnected, sir. Mm. Tough. <laughs> bro is. Bro is very get into it wittable. It's totally like, I'm disconnected if there was any way I could get hold of him, I would, but I can't. I know where he's working, so yeah. I'm gonna go now and get him now. Right, okay. <laughs> We're all human at the end of the day, and it's very difficult sometimes to see the the, Im the human impact some of these cases has on a family and how it can tear some families apart. But, you know, we have to be professional at the end of the day. While Mrs. Wiley leaves with her two young children to fetch her husband, the agents look around the house for any assets they could seize if he doesn't pay. Nothing in the house, mate, really. Uh, There's little here to cover the debt. Is that what the hell doing now? House, mate, really. Uh, There's is that a real dog or is that a, a stuffed dog that passed? What is Little going here on? To cover People really get these? 
I could never do it, bro. I'd be too worried. Like I'd be, I'd be tweaking. For the debt. The dog looked like it's real, and it's in shock that they're in his house. But only a few minutes later, a van pulls up near the house. Does that look like him? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Morning, is it Mr. Wiley. Morning, sir. My name is Mr. Victor. This is my colleague, Mr. McCracken. Hello, there, sir. Enforcement agents. Yeah. No. Nice no, to meet you, Mr. Right. Marty. Oh. Yeah, do you know what it's about? I do now, yeah. yeah. We yeah. don't, to be honest with you, that's what, what I'm is. asking. I was self-employed and I struggled with people not paying me. Because I wanted to better myself. I just wanted to, like, get a full-time job, but I ended up packing the job in. Mr. Wiley claims that after the company failed to pay him all the money he was owed, he fell into mortgage arrears and took drastic action. And I actually used their money to pay me mortgage because I nearly had the house repossessed. Yeah. When his employer found out what he'd done, they took him to court and he was ordered to repay the debt plus costs. And now, at the moment, the balance is £2,231 and nice. nine pence. Oh, if not, we instructed to remove goods. I don't know what to do. I don't know how I'm going to get the money. I don't know how I'm going to get it. Minutes later, no cap, it don't look like they got many goods to remove in there either. Mr. Wiley's wife and children arrive back home. With nothing worth taking from the house, Vic runs a check on the family car. Ah. Is it on fire nice? What type of car is this? I ain't never seen this emblem in my life. Okay. No worries, thanks, mate. The car is on a payment plan and can't be seized. So the agents turn their attention to Mr. Wiley's work. Work van as a Persia. Learned that though. Van. The fact of the matter is, our rig gives us the power to remove goods. So we will be removing the van today. I won't be able to earn any money to pay anyone back. Yeah. That's what it is, I'm afraid. So, no one else that can help you? No. And the dad did hospital. If I haven't got out the vehicle, I can't earn any money yeah. to pay it. Yeah. The agents would rather take money than remove the van but they hope the threat of seizing it might prompt Mr. Wiley to make an offer. It's all about finding a trigger point. It makes people actually take it seriously when we've taken control of something that they don't want to lose. It could be various goods. It could be one particular item that they don't want us to take. It might not be worth much money, but could have a detrimental effect on how they work. Before they call for recovery of the van, Stuart gives Mr. Wiley one <coughs> last chance to pay. I know it's a massive ask, and yet anyone can just nip it in the bud today and just end it today. That's going to be oh, better. Well, because about four weeks ago, the house was getting repossessed, yeah. and we had to try and get the money we could together then. Yeah. So the situation is at a stalemate. It's Guaria, was it? The house was getting repossessed. Yeah, they going through it. They might as well get them a little forty-eight or. One week to try Clear again. that Mr. Wiley can't pay the £2,200 he owes. So Stuart speaks to the office. Hello. Hi, Stuart. Hi. Yes, All right. It's good news. The claimant has thrown Mr. Wiley a lifeline. That's good. The claimant said that he wants, basically wants 50% yeah, today. Yeah, I've got a pound in my account. Yeah. If not, we'll have to remove goods. You've got my money. You're struggling as it is. Claim wants fifty percent to show willing, and then he can clear the rest in thirty days. So you're looking at <coughs> two thousand two hundred. Excuse me. It seems even half the money is out of reach, but the agents make it clear this is their final offer. With regards to the van, it will be removed. It's then stored for seven days for its own public auction. Do you really want to take that? Knowing that losing the van would make it difficult for him to work, Mr. Wiley finally starts to make some calls to try and raise funds. I'll have to ask your mum and dad. Hello, is, is Grandad there? Listen, mate, I'm in a bit of trouble. I've got players in the house. We can't leave out, we're going to take the van. That's a spooky. Oh no, this was a real dog. Look. Bro was really stiff up there like a, <laughs> like a, uh, what is that thing called? Where they be stuffing animals after they pass away to make them like, like little, like make them look real taxidermy. He looked like a little taxidermy French bull. Look at him now. Just as real as he want to be. 
Mm-hmm. Got to enter the house and have them pay the bill. Twelve hundred pound. Yeah, I'll give it back in two weeks, no later. I promise. <coughs> Thanks, Paul. I'll give it back in two weeks. I promise you. With the help of his father-in-law, Mr. Wiley has met the claimant's demand for a fifty percent down payment, but the situation has taken its toll. <sighs> I'm just gonna have to work my nuts off now for two weeks. I don't know how much more bad luck we can have. No. <laughs> we really don't. We're best, right? Just have to be positive. I gotta be demoralizing as a man. I'm telling you, man, the stuff that. that hey, listen. If he didn't what have if he had his choice, he would never have anyone know about any of this. He would just deal with it all silently. But this is you can't like he in so much debt, like they didn't came for the house, they didn't did everything. Case is resolved for now. Mr. Wiley now has thirty days to clear the rest of his balance. But if he's unsuccessful, the agents will be back. It's your card and your receipt. I need you to print your name there. 8,200 paid today. Yeah. Balance to be cleared, 1,687.49. What a bad luck time I've had, eh? It can only get better. It will, mate. It can only get better. That's true. The, the genuinely are on hard times. I mean, if you can't afford to pay. That's true, man. When it feels like... It, it, it gets better when you feel like you're at the rope's end. Be a mortgage. So he's managed to get 1,200 quid from his father-in-law. Coming across this more and more, to be completely honest with you. Grandparents, that they've saved up their entire lives, yet they're spending it on their kids. I'm pretty confident they'll clear it. Sounds like he had a bit of a bad luck, bad luck run. Hopefully it will get better. Stuart and Vic thought on their feet to prevent a family crisis. But in their next case, the balance is 2,435. No, 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 no. no, no. 26 British adults. See what y'all trying to do there. Personal insolvencies in England and Wales are on the rise. In 2016, over 90,000 people became insolvent, and almost 40% of British adults are worried about their current level of debt. 248 people a day are declared insolvent or bankrupt. Dang. I can't do that. I cannot have. I got. I got a business to run. You know, when you. Ins- I don't know about insolvent, but America. If you declared bankrupt, you can't have a business in your name. That's tough. For however many years, seven years. No, that's dead. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are now in Blackpool. Such a muggy, miserable day. Yeah. I thought he was going to say such a muggy, miserable, miserable town. That would have been negative. They have a writ to collect nearly two and a half thousand pounds owed to a plumber's merchant by kitchen fitter Mark Beach. Mr. Mark Beach trading as best interiors, two thousand four hundred and thirty-five pounds. Right, it says it's here on the left. Best interiors. Y'all know if y'all see me looking down, the chat is right here. It's on my phone. I took it off the TV. I mean the the displays because it was slowing down my computer. Hello. Hello. The doors to the workshop are open, but nobody appears to be in. So Stuart phones the number he has for the defendant, Mark. Hello. Hello there, Mark. My name is Mr. McCracken. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Um, I'm currently in your unit at the moment with regards to an outstanding balance, so with a High Court writ to collect right, an outstanding. Is, is it to me, Mark Beach? It is, yeah. Trading as best right. interiors. Uh, yeah, I'm bankrupt, so you want to be bankrupt in under? When was it I'm you were bankrupt. declared bankrupt? 2002. 2002? Yep, I'm still bankrupt. Right, okay, but that was from 2002, sir. This is after your bankruptcy. Mark Beach's bankruptcy 15 years ago would have written off most of the debts he incurred before that date, but not after it. 
I'm still currently bankrupt. Yeah, but so is anything after. You bro don't know how bankruptcy works. You don't, yeah. The debt you're liable for, regardless of your bankruptcy. Because you go bankrupt because the debt that you've incurred is not for the debt that you've incurred after your bankruptcy. When people are declared bankrupt, they think they don't have to pay any future debts, but it can't be further from the truth. It's uh, they try and hide behind the word bankruptcy to think that we're not gonna we're not gonna collect. We're simply gonna walk away. With his argument not being accepted, Mark changes. Bro went bankrupt, and fifteen years later, still in the same behavior. Like, did you not learn? Tag. Best interiors doesn't belong to me. Right. It's my wife's business, so you can't talk to well, They've assumed I'm a senior interior. Mm -hmm. Nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. Why they've taken me to okay. court. So what we'll do is, sir. Well, what we'll do is, sir. If you want to see <coughs> Mrs. M. Sumner, yeah. the sole proprietor of Best Interiors. The agents now need proof that his wife owns Best Interiors, the business named on the writ, and that all the equipment in the workshop belongs to her. Well, she can provide documentation, so, but she needs to do that in the she next 15 that. minutes. She can, help, she can produce all the documentation yeah. you need. Well, she needs to do that in the next 15 minutes, sir, because we're ringing recovery for these goods to be removed. And what stored for some, removed? Well, the chop saw that's in the middle of the floor for a start. Um, what do you mean the chop saw? How have you got in my property? In, in her property? Because it's open, sir. No, it was not open. It was open, sir. I'm no, not... it was not open. Sir, I'm not going around in circles. It was definitely open, sir. It was definitely open. Okay, so what I'll do is now, I'll ring recovery. Uh, well, I, don't, I don't own those property. That okay. property is owned by Mrs. Sumner. Yes. You can have a word with the landlord that the lease is in Mrs. Sumner's yeah, name. The lease is irrelevant, sir. The lease can be anyone's name. It can be in the name of Father I Christmas. It makes no property. difference. Not Father Christmas, Stuart. See, this is why people be getting into it with you. I'll, I'll so, hold of now, won't I? If you can, sir, yes, because in 15 minutes I'll be ringing recovery for these goods to be removed. Okay, so I'll speak to you shortly. Now, while they wait for Mark to arrive, Stuart and Vic start an inventory of goods they could seize if he can't prove they belong to his wife. All right, so what have we got, Vic? You got a chop saw? Yeah, it's a Mini Max. Mini it's a Mini Max cutting saw. Cutting saw, yeah. I would be ecstatic to see them remove some goods this episode. Like, season five, they finally get what people want to see. I don't understand why it takes people 10 years or, or four or five seasons to figure out why we're here. You know why we're here. <sighs> Anything else? What Let's about this negative? Titan? Yeah. Titan, speed bench, pillar drill. The joinery equipment would more than cover the £2,400 Mark owes. But removing it could put the business in serious jeopardy. We're not in the game to close anyone down. We're not here to close a business down because that's not going to have advantage to no one. We would rather want to work with the business, leave assets there. They can trade and still raise funds and pay the claim in that way. Ten minutes after Stuart phoned him, Mark arrives at the workshop. Oh, sorry, all right. All right, no worries. She owns, she owns everything here. Yeah. Does she? Everything. I can't have anything, so I don't have anything. I appreciate I, that. I'm an employee of Best Interiors. Yeah. Employed by my wife. She I don't physically own anything. That's fine. As soon as we see proof of that. The balance is £2,435. It's what? £2,435. It was £1,200. It was, yeah, but then the CCJ Sorry. wasn't paid, so there's court fees. And gone to the high court, no, anyway. That's yeah. me who's responsible for that, because yeah. I put the goods. Yeah. So... After first claiming he had nothing to do with the debt, Mark no, now, now he taking full responsibility. appears to know all about it. So goods have been taken in, in your name and they simply haven't been paid for? Goods have been taken, yeah. Yeah, and they haven't been paid for. As yet, no, they haven't. No, been. no. They gave you goods without paying? Yeah. Literally, you walked in, that was it. See you later. Yeah. Well, hell, I need to go there then. Yeah. <laughs> they know <laughs> me. They know me. Yeah. My mind boggles some days when a debtor it admits to owing the debt, but they want to blame the claimant for allowing them to get away with it. That just makes me want to resolve the matter even more so. Right. You're not helping your case by gloating about it, basically. You're bragging on it. Yeah, but they let me do it, so I just, you know, never paid. That's goofy. That's bad business. And make sure we get the right result for the claimant. It's like robbing your plug. And there being no more plugs left. Like <laughs> The agents have now been at the premises for half an hour when Mark's wife, Michelle, arrives. What's the problem? 
Well, the root is in the name of Mark Beach trading as best in tier. Michelle got the can I speak to your manager haircut. She knows she's gonna come in and try to resolve issues. Yes. Okay. He admitted he owes the money. Yeah. So we had to try and resolve the matter today. Yep. This is mine. All mine. Right. Have you explained about W Y about yourself? Well, I'm an employee, that's why. Yeah. He hasn't actually got anything in his name anyway. That's a set of accounts, and that's my accountant. Let me just have yeah. a quick look, yeah? The documents prove that Michelle is the sole proprietor of Best Interiors and that she owns the assets in the workshop. The joinery equipment can't be seized. But Michelle is keen to know more about the debt her husband accrued. I don't even know what the payment is because I don't know what it's for. Yeah. I don't know. Well, what your well, husband does. Yeah, but what would the amount be? £2,435.44. Outstanding debts to suppliers could harm the business's reputation. Keen to so I just said that like it's like it's like taking from your plug and there's nobody there to, you, you know what I'm saying like the word don't spread resolve the matter quickly Michelle makes the agents an offer how much I've got the money it's just not cleared right P please in this, this is, no I want to say I can show you then yeah but it's not what's available right is there any way you can how much is available one one four. it's not gonna be enough Michelle's offer of just over £1,000 won't be enough for the... Yes, it is. Why are, you, why are you be acting like that, Stuart? Yes, it is. Claimant. Stuart keeps negotiating. If you can get to two... Shout out, Jasper. We can do 435.44 on a controlled goods agreement. So this stays for 24 hours. But you need to give us a quick call in 24 hours, either you or Mark, and see that I can pay the rest of it. Yeah, right, I can. Okay. When we see family members arriving to, to the rescue, we think, great, here's somebody that can raise the funds or have some funds for us, and uh, the matter will be resolved. She's trying to help the business, she's trying to support her husband, and they don't want the business to go. Stuart calls the office to see whether Michelle's offer of a £2,000 down payment and the balance in 24 hours... Absolutely, they take it now. Is acceptable. Um, uh, you can do 2000 now and then £435.44 tomorrow on a CGA. And then there's one final payment tomorrow of 435.44. All right. Sorted. There you have it. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. That's sorted. Right, what's the 400 and odd bit? 435.44. I think I might have cash in the end. Right, OK. So, yeah, I'm going to have 11 on that card, 9 on that card. 11 and 9. OK, no problems. OK. I t hey, listen. However she was going to get to the bottom of it, she got there, I told you. Any woman with short haircuts be handling business 100%. Now, whether it's negative handling business or positive like this lady, they're going to cause a positive or negative uproar. After denying all liability for the debt, Michelle has now come up with the entire balance owed today. Right, that one has gone through. 20. Three. 30. 30. You got the five. We'll leave the 44 page. And doing it with a smile on her face, too. I'll light you off. Ooh, light you off. I am on to adjust. Take it easy anyway. Alright, see you later. It's been a good result for the agents. Dang, man. So thus far, I didn't see 81 year old mothers handle debt. I didn't, I didn't see people's wife handle debt. But I guess as, as a husband and wife, you're a unit. You're, you are one, but dang. It looks like Mr. Beach is used to the system, hence the reason he knows all about bankruptcy, he's been through it himself. So he's been to probably a dark place himself at some point. Everyone's got a pressure point, so you we've worked on that and we got a payment. What annoys me the most is, he's walked into the clients, he's taken the goods and not paid for them, so justice definitely today has been served. A recent report has shown that Britain's high streets are experiencing an economic downturn, not seen since the financial crisis of 2009. The rise of online shopping and increases in business rates has put high street retailers under pressure, with one in five at risk of closing down.
Gary Brown and Connor Jackson are back on the road. This time they're in Ashford, Kent, on their way to recover £8,500 owed by a jewellery and gift shop to a former employee. What have we got there, mate? Uh, next up, we have got Jill Maria Archer, trading as gold mine. Uh, it's quite a large debt, eight and a half grand. The owner of the shop, Jill Archer, took a former employee to court, claiming and that lost. stock had been stolen from the business. But the court dismissed Jill's claim and ordered her to pay the employee's legal costs. Ah, uh, it was a bit of luck, didn't it? Jill, you should have just left it alone. He was adamant. And now the tables have turned. If Jill can't or won't pay today, we'll take it away. The agents have the right to remove assets to offset the debt. Ew. This looks like my Hello, enemy. Jill Archer. Hello there. My name's Gary Brown, High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm assuming you know what it's about. At the moment, we're looking for eight and a half thousand pounds. I haven't got eight and a half thousand pounds. Okay. It's not me trading scroll, right? It's a limited company. And nothing in the shop belongs to me personally. Jill claims that her business is registered as a limited company and that none of the stock belongs to her personally. If she's telling the truth, the agents won't be able to seize anything. Well, I'm sure if that's the truth, you got the paperwork for it, which, you know, this looks like a legitimate business, so it should be having some paperwork. But Gary is suspicious. If you can prove to me that this property yeah. uh, and all the goods is owned by the limited company. Well, you'll have to give me a few days to get the paper. We're here now. Have you got your business rates, please? I don't know where it is. We're in the middle of tidying up. You're going to need to find it. Gary now turns detective. Simple. And immediately spots some paperwork. So here's a letter from TSB addressed to you personally. There's no limited company mention on this. This is dated 13th of October. Yeah, this is recent. I use that card mm -hmm. to buy the stuff. We didn't so you, have you, any money. Okay. Bank you've, you've just cleared it up for me, really, okay. Jill. You use this card that's in Jill Archer's name, your name, to buy the stock. There's no... <laughs> so it's Jill Archer's, period, right? ...mention on this bank statement of any limited company. You have purchased the... Don't ever do that, man. Always transfer it to a company card and then purchase. If you got to use your personal money, transfer your personal money into your business account and pay that way through Goods. your business. Using this card, which is what you just told me, in your... Dang, Jill. She got the I just effed up look on my face. <laughs> ah, Jill, it's okay. Your name, your personal name, rather than using a limited company account. The recent bank statement is enough evidence to prove that stock in the shop does belong to Jill personally and can be seized. But before he calls for recovery, Gary wants to give her a chance to pay her eight and a half thousand pound debt. Jill, do you want to make some phone calls and see if somebody can help you with this? Because if we do remove goods, the debt is not going to then increase up to nine thousand six hundred and ninety one pounds. I'd rather not do that. We've got no money. This isn't going to go away. Even if I did leave here today, this is your personal debt. We would then re we would attend your home address. We've got nothing at home here. Do yourself a favour and make some phone calls to see if somebody can help you with this. Otherwise, we'll have no option but to remove goods. The debt arose because Jill believed two former members of staff had embezzled half a million pounds. She went to the police. Half a million? Please. We spent 16 months doing an investigation and um, they wrote to me in February 2016 and said they didn't have enough evidence for the CPS to prosecute him. And this is why we're in the rest room. Jill then took out a civil action against one of the former employees and lost. She's now been ordered to pay their legal costs. The agents need to get this case resolved today, one way or another. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it till quarter to one. If you still haven't managed to find any funds, okay. then I'm going to escalate the case to the sale and dispose of stage. It's clear that Jill has hit rock bottom. Yeah, I mean, dang. I feel bad because of her situation and everything. 
But did them employees really do that? Because, you know what I'm saying? If she had a gut feeling about it, how did they get away? See, man, the UK be just... But if she can't raise any funds before the agent's deadline, she Dude, could wow. lose what little she has left. Gary Brands. I don't want to recap. And evidence. Now, under pressure to save her stock, Jill finally picks up the phone and calls her accountant. I need some help. I've got two phone lifts here. They're going to remove goods unless I can come up with some arrangement. Hello? She hasn't got anything. They've lost everything. They're on tax credits. They are on that lower money that they have to give on tax credit. If I could get an offer, a proposal together, then I can put that to the client and hopefully it will be something they accept. £200 a day with our help today. On, on an $8,000 balance? Um, an 8500 balance. I, I don't think he's going to accept £200 a loan. OK, then. All right, bye-bye. Hello? W Accountant. Hello? Hello? Hi, fire her. She was no help. What was she? The accountant's offer of £200 is not enough as a down payment. Obviously. But if Jill can't raise any more, she could lose her livelihood. My only focus really is the High Court writ. I don't want to ruin her livelihood. That's the last thing I want to do, but the money is owed to the client for one reason or another. I would rather it didn't go to this because ultimately we're going to have to remove goods which to cover this debt is probably going to close the business down, almost certainly. After 15 minutes on the phone, Jill still hasn't been able to raise any funds, and Gary's deadline has come and gone. It's over with, Gary. What are you going to do for gonna, Do you want to come on here yeah. and just start clearing these? We need to get pictures of all this, because some of it's going to worth something. As the majority of the stock is low-value costume jewellery, the agents will have to clear most of it out to cover the eight and a half thousand pounds Jill owes. I was hoping we didn't have to do this. No, needs must. But then suddenly, Jill brings out some solid gold from her stock and phones a local jeweler to God, that's their personal stock. What we got? To find out how much they'll pay for it today. Right, we've got a load of gold out the window. It's all nine. Selling the gold would give the agents an acceptable down payment against the debt and keep Jill trading. But Jill would have to take the gold to the jeweler to get the money, <coughs> which means Gary has to let go of the only assets of any value he has. This is a judgment called Jill, based on me making an assessment that you're quite a trustworthy. Yeah, I trust Jill. Person. Hopefully, I don't regret it. <laughs> he decides to allow her to take the gold. I might be proved wrong, but I think it's uh, it's a risk worth taking because it means we can recover more for the client. That's all the client cares about is how much we can recover. So I think it'll work in our favour. Half an hour later, Jill's back, but she hasn't sold the gold. Nine hundred and seventy-five. So hold on. Right. So you can get more by sending it to a bullion dealer. Well, where's a bullion dealer then? Yeah, we have to post it up oh, and then God. it comes oh, we... back tomorrow. Although she could sell to the jeweller today, Jill claims she can get £1,500 from a bullion dealer if Gary's prepared to wait. He... Yeah, what are we going to do now? I think you're going to wait. He calls the office to see if he can set up a payment plan. Drop us £1,500 Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers. It's good news. Rather than take everything now and probably force you out of business, I'm going to do what I can to help you and give you till Friday. Let's set up an arrangement okay. for 1500 Yeah. The reason I'm doing this is because you've held it together as a bit of gratitude, and you could have easily run off with that yeah. down the street and <laughs> never see you again. I'm honest. It becomes obvious that somebody's being truthful and honest and forthcoming and they then gain my trust. The truth will always set you free. <laughs> Don't be playing games. That's just a general rule of thumb for life, though. It turns the whole visit into a much easier thing to manage. It's slow motion, does Ultimately, it? Ultimately, they just they, they realize at the end that we're actually there to help. Jill has two days to make her down payment and must pay £200 a month until the debt is cleared. We're going to do what we think is right because... 
it makes business sense. I just need you to sign and print there for me, please. Okay. The matter is resolved <coughs> for now. But if Jill doesn't stick to the agreement, the agents will be back. Hopefully this is the last... Stick to the agreement, the... She can't even afford the D. That's crazy. No Diddy. She can't even afford the D on gold mine. I'm going to say gold mine. Agents will be back. Is that what it's Hopefully supposed this to is say? The last time we meet know. in a nice way. All right. <laughs> Not the result that we were expecting. Thugs Haze 22. You're, you're, we wildin'. We, when we first thought we were going to be attending the jewelers. No, no, I was thinking. Thought, oh, sweet. You got an Instagram? You got an Instagram where we can go look at your pictures real quick? Easy. Yeah, turn up, they'll pay oh. the cash and we'll be gone. Paul Will. That's good, Paul. Two days after the age. figure man just sound like a good lady man tell her leave a like comment subscribe turn on your post because we're in the stream now i gotta get on thug thug Hayes. i gotta get on them so i'm gonna holler at y'all let me go ahead and stop record